Oh, so, yeah. At the end of the line. Oh my goodness, guys. Good morning. Good morning. It's hump day right here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Good golly, good morning, folks. Come on in here. Let's get this party started this morning. It's a beautiful day. Looking outside my office window, the sun is shining. No clouds, the breeze is blowing. God is good. Everybody say amen and amen. It is so good to see you guys this morning. Good to get this day kick-started, so grab that coffee, grab your Bible, grab your journal, your notebook, whatever the case may be, and come on in here and let us begin having an incredible day. Let's get her started. Let's get her done. Say hello when you get in and get on, and then click that share button. We want to get her out there. Out into your neck of the woods. Send it out there to all your friends and all your family. That's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing here over the next couple of seconds. I was beginning to have a little bit of technical difficulties just as I was about to click the live switch. My internet said, see ya. And so I had to I had to shift gears real quick and get everything right back on and get it up and running. And so we are here. We're good to go. And so I, it, it's almost like the thing just needed an extra cup of coffee this morning. And so we were able to do that and get the coffee to it. And we were say, hallelujah, all is good. And we are back and back and ready to go. Guys, hope y'all are having a great Wednesday. Like I said, it is gorgeous out here. Love it, love it, love it. My squirrels are already wrecking havoc in my yard as they're digging and playing. And, uh, and it is just, uh, it's a good thing to see that. I love to watch that. It just makes my day. So, so much better. Folks, I am in the process of getting this shared as well, so I want to encourage you to do the same thing. We want to get everything uh, sent out there to your friends and invite them to watch us as well. When you get in, please say hello. We want to know what all is going on in your world, and we are going to chit-chat about some things here in just a little bit. Drink a little bit of coffee, and man, oh man, what a powerful ending to chapter 4 today in the book of Second Samuel. Mm. Day what, Miss Denise has got my coffee just absolutely on a righteous side this morning. I am drinking a espresso roast pour over this morning. And for those of you who don't know what it is, let me just say that that is nectar of the gods. It is an amazing thing. It's an individually made cup of coffee. Uh, you literally put uh, espresso grounds in a filter and just pour your uh, hot scalding water over it and just let it seep and soak and all of that good stuff. And all I'm going to say is it is glorious this morning. It is good stuff. And I like espresso roast coffee. And so I got it all going on. So it is good, good, good stuff. Miss Denise has taken great care of me to get her started. My cup is full. It is running over this morning. Mm. How is everybody on this Wednesday? I am almost there, folks. We can kind of chit-chat. How is everybody this morning? Gearing up for uh, our Bible study tonight. Boy, if you can, folks, y'all need to haul on out to the campus at Ridgewood Baptist Church tonight. We're going to be there starting at 630, and we are looking forward to a great night as we are continuing our study in the book of Philippians. It's amazing. I mean, the book of Philippians is incredible. Paul is just laying out this, this letter of, of rejoicing in, in the Lord to the church at Philippi. It's good, good stuff. So that's all going to going to get kick-started tonight at 6.30. We've got uh, nurseries provided for your children, and we got kids' things going on as well. Miss Judy Stotts takes care of all that. So that's all at 6.30 tonight. Let's see, who all who all's hanging out with the preacher this morning? Let's see here. Hey, Brian, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ah, uh, there's a Jones family. Good morning, Dr. and Mrs. Jones. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, there's the Allens. Hey, glad you guys are back. Uh, glad you guys are all in, all ready to go. I like good stuff. Missed y'all yesterday. So glad y'all are here. Uh, hey, guys, if y'all were not able to join us last night for our online Sunday school class with Brother Larry... Guys, y'all missed a blessing. That's all I'm going to say. And so I, I want you, when we're done this morning, 
I want you to scroll back down on this page and I want you to just sit back and allow God to speak to you through the 42nd chapter of the book of Job. As uh, Brother Larry just laid that thing out there, it was amazing. Uh, it, it was the end of that section in our in our quarterly as we wrapped up that hopscotch uh a tour, if you will. I think that's how Brother Larry put it last night, a hopscotch tour through the book of Job. But last night was just amazing. And so you do not want to miss that. So go back and 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 just enjoy, let God speak to you. And matter of fact, that might be one of those you just want to save and go back and watch over and over again. So so good. Man, 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 just good stuff. So that uh, that was all taking place last night. Miss Sandy is on this morning. Good morning, Miss Sandy. How's things up on your hill this morning? Have you already been out and fed your rabbits? Uh, Miss Sandy has some rabbits as she goes out and feeds Cheerios uh, in the morning. So sweet. I love it. I love it. So it's just such sweet stuff. Um, I stopped by Miss Mary Weddington's this, I think it was last week. I, I believe it's when it was. Um, yeah, I've lost track of time. Anyway, there was a baby rabbit right outside Miss Mary's, uh, door. So it's like she was waiting, or the, the rabbit was waiting on uh, Miss Mary to come out and feed it. Uh, Miss Sandy says, I already fed them. Yes, you did. Mm-mm-mm. So sweet. So sweet. Last week, I think I told you this, I had this, this massive turtle about every four to five weeks, that dude comes cruising through our yard. He's the funniest thing. And uh, he's literally about the size of a hubcap. I mean, he's a big, big blessed turtle. And uh, we have moles real bad in our yard. And so, you know, it breaks up the ground and it you know just gets a lot of dirt everywhere. And, and you know, you kind of step on it and, and mash everything out. Well, anyway, uh, on one of the spots where the moles were, you know, there's a lot of dirt and it had rained and it was a muddy spot. And when the turtle got on that muddy spot, he got stuck in it. He, he it just, there was some suction from the, the mud or whatever and it, and it stuck to the bottom of his shell. And that dude could not get out. And we sat there and watched him, I guess, what, Denise an hour? And uh, he just couldn't move. And we thought something was wrong. So I ended up going out there and I, I literally picked him up and you could, you, the suction was there. So as I picked him up and just kind of set him over, he was ready to go, and he took off around, uh, you know, things in the backyard, and then he headed back out into the pasture with cows. Were but, but he comes through about every four, five, six weeks or something like that. He's the funniest thing ever. So, man, oh man, oh man. Hey, Arlene, what's going on, lady? How are you this morning? Hey, guys, I have not checked the the weather radar this morning. I don't think we've got anything going on, uh, uh, to, you know, today weather wise. I mean, do we? Has anybody seen anything? Um, I am so off whack because uh, I normally do that, and I have been reading so much this morning, I just totally forgot to look at the weather. Uh, but I think we're going to be good all day today. Uh, obviously, there's you know ground clutter around Little Rock, but uh, other than that, I think we're good. There is nothing on the radar showing right now, so we are all good. That means when you get out, you got to get out and throw your sunglasses on. Hey, Ruth Hastings. Good morning, lady. How are you this morning? How are you this morning? Glad you're tuning in with us and hanging out here with the preacher from Ridgewood Baptist Church. We're having a glorious day. Coffee is just, it's just so good. And the chit chat is even better. Hey guys, I read something this morning. Y'all y'all do know we are, uh, we're just four or five days away from the start of the Summer Olympics. Y'all do know that, right? Um, it, it's not being played up like normal because there's a whole lot of things that are, are going on with it. They're not allowing spectators uh, it's strictly going to be the athletes and their their staff. That that that's it. I mean, no n nothing. And uh, they're already pulling some regulations on some things that uniforms aren't good or they don't like those uniforms. I mean, it's real ugly. But I read last night that the main guy that's over all of this thing. And they're by the way, they're already having COVID uh, positives pop up in the Olympic Village there that he has made the announcement that that uh, it is not beyond the realm of possibilities that he completely cancels, completely shuts down the Olympics as it gets here. He said it is not, it is not against. So uh, it, it's just really, really bad. Have already done some events. Actually, they, they're leading up to it, right? They've not had the the they've not had the opening ceremony. Uh, 
they've not had uh, any of the the uh, competition yet. They're just trying to get all over there. They're getting set up and and test drive things and so on and so forth. And so uh, they're really having some fits over there. But he said it is not a, not beyond the realm of possibility to totally stop the Olympics and not have it done. So that would be uh, that would be historical, to be completely honest with you. So I'm just kind of. Mm. Wow. And I, I always did like to watch them. Uh, I, I really did. Now, we don't have cable TV, so we won't be watching them this year. You know, I might catch some things on, uh, you know, replay or, or something like that, but uh, online. But, you know, we will not be watching any of the competition. But I just thought that was pretty, pretty unique. And uh, Denise just showed me, I mean, just before we went live, that uh, uh, the, help me out, Denise, it was the Jonesboro City Council. Uh, is having a meeting tonight in Jonesboro. It's their regularly scheduled, uh, I think, something. But they are requiring Mask to attend the city council tonight. So uh, lots and lots of things beginning to pop back up with the increase in COVID positive cases. Yesterday's numbers, Brother Larry shared last night, was over 1,800 yesterday in the state. And we are projected over the next two weeks to be well over a thousand every day. So folks, it is not gone away uh, at all. And and even though you may be vaccinated, there are people who have been vaccinated getting it again. Um, and so it's like I've been saying, we've got to be smart. I mean, we have to just be smart. Okay. You've got to, you, you got to wash your hands. You got to use hand sanitizer. Be careful with your social distancing, okay? Just be smart. Um, I mean, for, for real. Just seriously, for real. Hey, good morning, Frederick Irby. What you doing, my brother? How is things in your neck of the woods today? I hope you are well. I hope things at your church are well. I hope you guys are ready for a big old, big old throwdown on a Wednesday night. What are you teaching on tonight, Frederick? What are you teaching on tonight uh, at, uh, at at church? Love to hear it. I'm in Philippians chapter two. So come on, come on. Let me know what you're teaching. Hit me up here. Oh, oh hey, while I'm thinking about it, today from 10 to 12, if you guys are on the road anywhere between Four City and Wynn, it is drive-through prayer at Fitzgerald Crossing today. Uh, 10 to 12, 10 to 12 at Fitzgerald Crossing drive through prayer. Go through, pray with them, pray for them, let them pray for you. Tell them Pastor Jim sent you. Uh, just go through there, encourage those folks. That is such a powerful ministry. So go through there and see. Uh, I don't think Gary is going to be there. I don't think Gary and Kim, I think they're tied up, but I know their team is going to be there. Tell Anita howdy for me. Amen to that. Amen to that. Hey, guys, let's read our morning Bible verse. We're headed over to Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. We're looking at a verse that is found in that first letter uh, to uh, the churches in Asia Minor. The first letter, do you know who it's to? Do you know who the letter is addressed to? Drum roll. Don't you dare look. It is addressed to the, the angel of the church at Ephesus or to the pastor at the church at Ephesus. So we get our, 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 our touchback right here already going back into the Ephesian church. And Jesus says this in chapter two, verse seven. This is our, our, our morning verses. We are still, uh, uh, studying through or reading through holding on to God's promises. This is powerful stuff here. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. You ready for this? To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Oh my, what a promise this morning. Amen. What a promise. Let's read that again. To he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hang on to it, church. That's a powerful verse this morning as we are going through our theme of holding on to God's promises. Man, oh man, that's a good one. All right, let's see here. Uh, news. Guys, I saw this. Matter of fact, my daughter mentioned this to me here several days ago because they've seen it and it's just now beginning to hit 
uh, mainstream media. Uh, all of this uh, 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 this weather stuff is just kind of goofy that's bringing out some things. But they have found a new critter in Texas. Okay? Now, this is, I mean, I'm not, not stored at all. And it is called, y'all ready for this? It is an acid shooting spider scorpion that's found in, in Texas parks. Y'all, as a matter of fact, I'm going to copy this. Y'all, y'all have got to see this, okay? I, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to I'm going to post the link to this thing right here, so that you guys can actually take a look at this thing a little bit later on. Uh, there it is. There's a picture of it when that thing pops up, uh, or at least it's I, I can see the picture on my laptop, okay? But it is, they're, they're calling it a, a spider scorpion, and it looks like a little bitty scorpion. I mean, it really does. It's like, you know, it's literally like, like yay big. And when it gets scared, its defense mechanism is to shoot out a poison out of its backside. I, I mean, and it is a nasty looking little dickens. I mean, it, it really is. Oh, see, what are they calling it? A, uh, um, What's it called? A a vinegaroon. Vinegaroon. Vinegaroon is what they're calling it. V-I-N-E-G-A-R-O-O-N. A A vinegaroon. That is a nasty little rascal. So uh, uh, all of that is popping up into the state of Texas. Have y'all really thought about just how magnificent the creativity level of our God really is? And all of the things that he creates and things like this that we that we're just now seeing. And, and let's just be honest, there are things in the depths of the ocean that we cannot comprehend creature wise. And they've been there since the flood. I mean, you just think about that. There is unexplored, unchartered territories in the depths of our oceans. And we have no concept as to what these creatures are, look like, can do. I mean, and from the microscopic all the way to the gigantuan, there is this beast of the sea that are there. Uh, can you pronounce? I cannot. To be real honest with you, I, uh, I I'm not a. I don't watch basketball. I don't watch any pro sports at all. And so all I've done is just uh, saw his name. Uh, I know they pronounce it, you know, Giannis is his first name. I, that's all I've heard. But I, I simply cannot. Like I said, uh, I read the headlines this morning that the Milwaukee Bucks won the national championship last night. Uh, but as far as me pronouncing that name, it ain't going to happen. I know it's Greek. I do know that. Uh Okay, I'll try to work on that today. We'll see if I, uh, if I can get it out of my, my mouth tomorrow. We'll try to work on that. Pam, the heart on his face could make him a love bug. Yeah, love bug is right, brother. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm -mm -mm. I don't want no part of that love. Y'all know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't want no part of that kind of love. And I don't know what kind of damage that poison does, but I don't know. I don't know. But creatures... I mean, creatures, God is just, he, he's just awesome. There is just all kinds of things that God has created that we just don't have a clue about. I mean, just, no. Thomas says, I call him Auntie for short. Ha! Auntie, Auntie. He's a big old boy, though. I mean, he is a big old boy. You know, like I said, I saw some headlines, you know, saw the things and scores last night, and I saw some headlines this morning. He's a big fella. I mean, he is. He's a big fella. He's like six, seven, six, eight, almost two fifty. He's a big, big, big man. He's a big, big man. Evidently, he played the game of his life last night. So, uh, good stuff. I know. I talked to uh, my best friend yesterday afternoon, who's an avid sports guy, and I just said, okay. And I, uh, you know, see, it was the Bucks and the Suns. I think was playing, and I asked him. I said, okay, who you got? And uh, and he said the Bucks. But he said, not because that was his team, but he said, evidently there was an Arkansas player, a, a former Arkansas Razorback that was on the team. Last night, like I said, I don't keep up with pro sports at all, at all. 
Um, I, I follow the NFL draft because I like to know where the college players land that I've watched, you know, for the year. But that's it. I'm a college football guy. I mean, we're we're countdown. We're under 50, 50 days away from the the start of college football. And I am like a kid in a candy store with a pocket full of quarters. I mean, I am so ready for college football. It's not even funny. Just bring it on. Bring it on. And I am all SEC, by the way. I love the SEC. I love all the teams. Tommy Allen says Bobby Portis. Yeah, I remember that name. So I guess that's the kid from Arkansas. Uh, I, I mean, I guess it is. I mean, congratulations. You know, praise the Lord. I, like I said, I just don't keep up with them. I don't have a dog in that fight. So it don't matter to me who wins. I, you know, I'll watch the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, just because it's football, you know, I kind of like some of the commercials. But it don't matter to me who wins or loses. I'm, like I said, I'm all in on college football. It is. It is all about college football. And folks, I am an LSU Tiger fanatic. I am all LSU and I am all Alabama. Go Tigers, roll tide. I mean, that's that's it. That's who I am. Y'all can throw rocks at me if you want to. But I am all about LSU, and I am really all about Alabama. So uh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Let the hate begin. Let the hate begin. And I know I'm right in the heart of Razorback territory. I get it. But, you know, uh, I, I grew up, and like they're in the SEC, and I do support the SEC, but I grew up in the years uh, to where, uh, and I went to Arkansas State, to where you were either all in for the ASU Indians or you were all in for the Razorbacks. Um, I mean, you know, you just were. And so uh, there, there was just so disdain between the two, and you were either one or the other. And like I said, I grew up in those years, and 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 I love the, the, the Indians. And I know they're called the Red Wolves now, but they will always be the ASU Indians to me. Uh, and, and so I, I've been a – fan of, of the uh, the Indian sports for years and the Indian football team. And so I have just never, ever, never, ever supported, uh, you know, been a fan of the Razorbacks. And I mean, it's, it is what it is. Now, when they're playing somebody else out of the SEC, oh, I'm all about them because I love the SEC to win. I really do. But I, I am an LSU and Roll Tide, folks. It is, it is, it is Roll Tide for me. Love Nick Saban. Coach Coach of the, the the forever. I mean, he's one of the greatest things. Accidentally bumped into those angry faces. That's funny. Yeah, I bet you accidentally bumped into those angry faces. That's so funny. Uh, and I'm ready. I mean, I am ready. Alabama's already on a track to win it again this year, and I am I am ready to watch it. That's all I'm going to say about that. And if and if Alabama can, I hope LSU does. And that's all. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, after tonight, six thirty. Seriously, come on, come on in, guys. We won't have you here. Yeah, yeah yes, Miss Sandy knows. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I, I'm, I'm a running Joe guy. I mean, running Joe will always be the mascot for me for Arkansas State. I love it. And you know, they have done so much work on the stadium. Uh, you know, it's what's it called, Centennial Bank Stadium. Now they call it the Vault. It's kind of cool. Uh, they've done all kinds of upgrades. They've got this massive, got awful big waterfall that's coming in. I mean, it's a beautiful stadium. It really is. Uh, and I've, I've watched it progress over the years. Uh, one of my best friends has season tickets. And, and so we occasionally go with him and, and uh, just to get to hang out there. But even though everything right now is Red Wolves, folks, it will always be running Joe and the Indians for me. Uh, Always. And they've actually started coming back with some of those retro shirts. They can't say Indians, but they can put the, the Running Joe uh, logo just on a shirt. Uh, and so I, I'm going to have to get that. I said, always be Indians to me with Jim and Joe. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, that's right. Yeah, uh, Pam, you and Larry were actually there also during those Running Joe years. I mean, it's always going to be Running Joe. Uh, it, it's just, uh, our, uh, uh, jumping Joe. Yeah, that's it. Always, always, always going to be. I mean, you can't, you, you just can't, can't get rid of it. I would really like to get my hands on one of those nostalgic shirts. And I may, I may actually do that this year. You just go ahead and get one. Cause I love you. You can get them at the bookstores up there, or if you happen to go to a game, they sell them there. So it's, I mean, it's good stuff. But college football, folks, and I can talk years off on college football. Matter of fact, uh, my, my best friend in the world has a podcast, and, and uh, um, 
I'm hoping this year I can kind of sneak in there with him on some and we can chit chat on some football. So I love it. I love it. Hey, do y'all listen to podcasts? That's a great question. And I need to, I need to, to, to hear. And so, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. And they win football games. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. Serious question. And, and if you're watching, I really want to hear your answers. Okay. Okay. Do you listen to podcasts? Yes or no? Very simple. Do you listen to podcasts? Yes or no? The reason why I'm asking is, like I said, my best friend in all, in all the world um, does, has his own podcast. And he has been after me for a year to start one. I mean, and, and, and he's he doing it lovingly. And, but it's like I tell him, I say, dude, my morning, my morning, this right here is amazing. I love this. I love this venue, this, 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 this vehicle. Tommy says, listen to what? A, a podcast. They are, uh, Tommy, it's basically what we're doing right now without the video. It's strictly on audio, but it's all conversation. You listen to, maybe it's like a message online or a conversation where it's just chit chat or something like that. And there's gazillions out here. I mean, gazillions out here. Okay, so this is uh, an overwhelming no here. Uh, okay, Pam, I think, Pam, you said yes. Uh, and like I said, the reason I is, is I've been so encouraged to do that, but it is just another platform for for me to to speak, to get the message out. But I just don't know when I would have time to do it. And he's willing to teach me, to train me, and to go all the way through it, and... Uh, uh, and, and all of that stuff. And, and to be real honest with you, it, it's literally as simple as throwing a switch, to be honest with you. And, uh, just putting like this conversation we're having right now, just, you know, put it and record it and then just upload it as a podcast without the video. But, uh, I just don't know if that's it. And, uh, uh, I'm just, I was just being facetious. God don't like ugly. God don't like ugly. That's all I'm going to say about that. No podcast. I like audio and visual. Yeah, that's me too, uh, Brian. That, that is me too. I know I have been doing these things for five years this past week. Uh, I mean, I've studied it and, and I was on it as soon as Facebook announced it and, and I actually started broadcasting it. And we were recording uh, long before that. We were recording our Bible studies and popping them into uh, to YouTube and to uh, other means. Uh, actually we were uploading the videos right here on Facebook when we were doing college ministry. So we, we have been actual in broadcast ministry for years. And so, uh, uh, I love this medium. I really do, but I'm just trying to figure out, is there a, uh, is there a place for what we do here, uh, for what I do here, uh, in the podcast world, um, Again, I don't know what that would look like. I just, I just don't know. So, uh, y'all be praying for me about that, okay? I mean, is this a, is a mechanism? And Robert, I don't think you're on this morning, but Robert would say, "Yeah, do it, brother." I mean, I, I can hear him right now. So, uh, um, but that, that we talk about this every week uh, about the possibility of of doing a podcast and getting it launched out there so that it right. Uh, I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. So, something to look into. Something to look into. But I do like this. Oh, boy, I like this a lot. I mean, I like it a lot. And I like to talk back and forth. That's why I encourage you, if you're watching, let me know who is here so we can talk back and forth. We can engage. I mean, this is what it's all about to me is is that that dynamic of engagement. I love it. Man, oh, man. All right, tonight, 6.30, come on out to the campus, hang out with us. We're in the book of Philippians, 6.30, we are going to broadcast the Bible study, and then we'll kick it off, and we'll go into the prayer request as well. So uh, looking forward to uh, being with you folks tonight, do that. Let's see here. Uh, what else? Tomorrow morning, Lord willing, uh, we'll be right back here at 9 o'clock, and we're going to kick off chapter 5 as we uh, roll on in uh, to Second Samuel. So that's, uh, that's all going to start tomorrow, tomorrow, Friday morning. Uh, Lord Lily will be here in the Sunday morning. Guys, 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 the book of James is absolutely a smack you in the mouth book. And if you have missed our first two weeks 
uh, in the book of James. You really need to go back and catch that. You can find them here uh, on Facebook. You can go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in Ridgewood Baptist Church for City. And uh, that'll pull you up to our channel, and you can watch all of our videos there. Or you can go to our website, lovemyrbc.com, and click on the sermon page. And all of our sermons are in order uh, right there, and you can watch it. But you do not want to miss this series. The book of James is absolutely, it's that, right in your face as a believer, and we need every stinking little bit of it. So uh, that is all going to be uh, continuing on Sunday. Well, this is week three in this powerful series. Coffee Bar is going to open at 8.30. Praise Band will be practicing, and then uh, Sunday School with Brother Larry as he begins the book of Ecclesiastes on Sunday morning at 9.30, and then worship in the book of James at 10.30. So that's all what's going on. Um, uh, again, Vacation Bible School, our one-day VBS is July 31st. Don't want to miss that if you've got kids, grandkids, neighbor kids, anybody's kids. We'd love to have them. That is that Saturday morning. Registration's at 8.30, starts at 9. We're going to be done between 12 and 12.30, so we're going to call it 12.30. Uh, you can go to our website right now, lovemyrbc.com, and right at the top of the page, there's information about it. It talks about the age groups, and there's a link to pre-register your children. And we want to encourage everybody that is planning on coming to pre-register their child, okay? Got to get that done. That will save us tons of time that Saturday morning. And if you would like to help and be a part of that, uh, you need to let me know because we have got Miss Denny's going to be leading the Bible study, and we we can use some other adults in there with her. We are going to have Brother Norval and Miss Faye are going to be taking care of our crafts. They can use extra hands in the craft room. Miss Denise, Miss Mary Weddington are going to be taking care of our snacks. They can use some help getting things ready. I'm going to be doing the music and the opening and closing assembly as we'll be sharing the gospel with those babies uh, at the end of that service. Miss Margaret is going to be overseeing our, our recreation, and she can always use hands to help her, and it is going to be an outdoor rec time. Uh, and we just need some adults that'll help us move kids from point A to point B. And so if you would like to help and be a part of that, please, please, please let me know ASAP. All right, please let me know because we want to make sure that we are locked and loaded. It is going to be a morning thing. Pre-registration at 8.30 starts at 9, be done shortly after noon. So um, we want to do that. Help us get the word out. All about the theme of God made me. Miss Denny's going to be teaching out of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. So good stuff. So good stuff. God made me. All right, guys, grab your Bibles. We're headed over to wrap up chapter four. And this is an ugly chapter. I've told you it's a violent chapter. There's been some things going on. Uh, we saw a little bit of it yesterday. We saw the the murder uh, of um, King Ishbosheth. And you know something, guys? It was just uncalled for. It was unnecessary. It was premeditated. Uh, there was no need for that man to die. There was no need for that man to die. And we looked at all of the things that surrounded it. We looked at, uh, you know, he was in at home. He was in his bed. He was taking a nap at noon. Uh, where were the guards? Why, why wasn't he guarded? Uh, was it a, 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 a lax point on, on his part? Uh, were the guards sleeping? Were the guards in on it? We just don't know all of these answers to these questions, but the bottom line is, is he was vulnerable and two men took advantage of that as they snuck in, lined their way into the palace, into the actual household of the king, into not only his house, but they made it into his bedroom and they killed him while he slept. And then what did they do? They lopped off that brother's head. And so now we have got these two brothers, and we, let's understand that they are from the tribe of Benjamin. It is, it is um, uh, Rechab and Bana. Rechab and Bana, they're brothers. They were, uh, you remember, they were higher ups in the Israelite army. You remember that? Okay. Let's see, what, what was their titles? Uh, were they captains? Yeah, they were captains of troops. They were captains. 
Uh, Tommy says the guards were at, lu- at, at, at lunch. And you know, t- Tommy, that's very possible. Uh, I mean, there's so many, there's so many possibilities here. I don't want to think that those guards were in on it simply because it says, you know, that they, they made it into the house as though to get wheat. So it's like there was that, there was a lie planted. Well, this is the reason they're here. And so it was like everybody just said, okay, well, that's what they're doing. No big deal. And so everybody kind of just said, okay, well, that's, that, that's it. I won't think anything different than that. But then as soon as they did and they cut old boy's head off, then they headed down south down to Judah because they wanted to show off their prize. They wanted to show off the head of the king. But still, where were the guards? You know, that's just one of those uh, mind-chewing things that you just process. uh, Why? You know, I, I I don't know. That's just that's just the way my mind thinks, and there's not enough coffee in the in the world to you know help me solve those those uh, riddles. But these brothers, Bana and Rakab, they take old boy's head as a prize down south to Hebron to King David, and they're like, "Hey, look at here, look what we've done for you. We have killed your enemy." Now. Were they thinking that 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 David was going to promote them? That as as David began taking over all of Israel, putting the north and the south together, that they were going to be elevated, you know, in his staff, if you will. Um, there was some selfishness going on. There was some, uh, as I like to say, this is a gym word. There was some hoodoo going on right there. All right. I mean, it was just it was just a crock of mess, and so as we left yesterday, these brothers had 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 brought the head of Ishbosheth to David, and this is what they said. And I'm backtracking. This is verse eight. They said, "Here's the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life, and the Lord has avenged." My Lord, talking about David, the king this day of Saul and his descendants. So right there, they're kind of sucking up to David, my Lord. They're calling and addressing David as their Lord. So we we just don't know what kind of shenanigans they're trying to pull. But man, oh man, were they in for the uh, uh, surprise of their life. They were not prepared for David's response. You've also got to wonder, and we don't see this, okay? We don't see this. But you have to know that when the guards of the palace found the body of Ishbosheth, that's there, it's beheaded. They had to just go nuts. And they had to start looking for the killers. So all of pandemonium is breaking loose now in the north as they're trying to find out the the murderers of the king. But we don't have that in documentation right here. But you know chaos is taking place in the north. And so now we turn our attention to that conversation, Bana and Rakab had brought the head of Ishbosheth. They had presented it to, quote, their Lord David, saying, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life, and the Lord has avenged you. This day of Saul and his descendants. That's where we left it. Now it's David's turn. But David answered Rechab. This is verse 9, chapter 4. But David answered Rechab and Bana, his brother, the sons of Remen, the Berethite. And he said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all adversity? When someone told me, saying, Look, Saul is dead, Thinking to have brought good news, I arrested him. Y'all remember that? 
I arrested him and had him executed in Ziklag, the one who thought I would give him a reward for this news. Y'all remember this? This was back in chapter one of 2 Samuel. We've already saw this. Saul and his three sons, Jonathan and the, his two other brothers, were killed. And then you've got this little dude. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to back up here. Uh, you know, this, this little dude just, just comes on in. And he's thinking that he's going to convince David that he's the one who killed Saul, that Saul was asking him to put him out of his misery. Y'all remember that? This is chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 6. Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear, and indeed the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called me, and I said, Here I am. And he answered me, Who are you? And I said, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me again, Please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me, and my life still remains. And so this is that story that he tells. And you remember, he's got the crown and he's got the bracelet, you know? So all of this stuff is going on. And you remember what David did? David had that dude executed. Bam. He lied about it. And it, he was protecting the honor of the king. You don't kill the king. He was praying. Okay, what have you got? My study Bible said the doorkeeper who was who was sifting. Just, let me get back over there so I can read it. Was sifting wheat, became drowsy, and fell asleep. Okay, I don't have any of that in my information. So that's that's brand new to me, Arlene. That, that's and that's that's very possible. We just don't have that documentation. I mean, we just don't know. Very, very possible, though. Very possible. Good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. So, David, you remember the, you remember the covenant that, that David made with Jonathan? That he was not going to kill the rest of his family when he took over as, as the king? That was a covenant he made with his absolute bestest buddy. He was not going to do that. And so David is honoring that, that, that if you're trying to kill the king, you don't have the authority to do that, okay? And I'm going to avenge that. Why would you do it? And David kept his word. He was not going to do that. And so here, when we get back over here, you have got, you've got these two brothers that have brought what is to be the last remaining uh, 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 a child, if you will, of Saul, who is the king over Israel, over the northern kingdom. And they brought this brother's head to him. And he says, as the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all adversity? When someone told me saying, look, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good news, I arrested him and had him executed in Ziklag, the one who thought I would give him a reward for his news. I said, what are you thinking? I executed him, and here you are bringing me the head of his son? Look here. How much more when wicked men, and he just then called them wicked men. Y'all do get that. I mean, David just straight up called them wicked to their face. He is addressing them. Without question, how much more when wicked men have killed a righteous man in his own house on his bed? Ishbosheth had done nothing to David. Y'all do remember that, right? He had done nothing. Therefore, shall I not now require his blood at your hand and remove you from this earth? Don't you know? Don't you know that sent cold chills down the back of Bana and Rechab? And it was like, oh, snap, what have we done now? What have we got ourselves into? You see, they were thinking that David would be overjoyed to see the head of Ishbosheth, but it wasn't. I mean, they underestimated completely David's loyalty to Saul. David himself refused to kill Saul. He would not do it. He knew that when God wanted him to be put on the throne, it would be God to do it, not him, and it wouldn't be man taking that upon themselves. David was loyal to his pledge to honor and to, 
to take care of, if you will, preserve is a good word here, preserve Saul's family and his descendants. And that's back in 1 Samuel chapter 24 is when we see that. And so David is honoring that. And it wasn't the fact that they, they come wagging in his head. I mean, if you remember when David killed Goliath, he cut off old boy's head and he wagged it everywhere. Okay, I mean, he took care of that. So it, that had absolutely nothing. The thing is, is that Goliath was David's enemy. Saul and his descendants were not David's enemy. Completely two different things, okay? And even though, even though that that Ishbosheth was not God's anointed man, and even though David was, David learned not to take God's vengeance on his own hands. He was going to let God be God and do what he needed to do. And so it's about to get gnarly for these brothers. Verse 12. So David commanded his young men. Now this is the, the men that are that private squad around him. Okay, These are his, his personal guards that are always with him at, at all times. And we've seen this reference to David Jung men in the past. David commanded his young men and they executed. But look, it didn't just stop there. Cut off their hands and feet and hanged them by the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner in Hebron. David made an example of those two guys. He did not want anything to be associated with him that he had hired those guys out to kill the king. I mean, at, at all. And when you think about it, these were soldiers in the army under Ishbosheth, and they totally rebelled and killed him. David didn't want those kind of guys with him at all. These guys were murderers, and they deserved their punishment for being a murderer. And David didn't want them fighting in his army. He couldn't trust them. And so what you've got here, okay, is, is when David ordered this, okay, this proved to not only the people in the south, in Judah, but it also proved to the people in the north, okay, that he had neither commanded the murder of Ishbosheth, nor did he approve the murder of Ishbosheth. It was like, oh no, not on my watch, you're not going to do this. I didn't order it, and you're sure enough not going to blame me for this. And I most certainly do not agree with it. Not on my watch. It's not going to happen. He literally, this literally made David irate. He couldn't stand it because... God didn't ordain it. It was useless. Just like when Joab killed Abner. It was a worthless murder. It was a worthless murder. And so he did it. Debbie Tacker, don't understand the significance of the hands and feet. That's a good question. Matter of fact, that's a great question. This was more, uh, now we don't have documentation on this, Debbie, okay? So let me just clarify what's about to come out of my mouth, that we do not have documentation on this. But by cutting off one's hands, they were basically saying you're not going to do anything else by your hands, okay? Uh, and same thing by cutting off the feet, it was you're basically not going to be able to run away, okay? But here again, we don't have documentation on that. And it was just severe punishment. Because when you think about it, Ishbosheth died by the hands of these men. Because they physically stabbed him and they physically cut off his head. And it was with their feet that they run away. 
And so this was a stoppage of all of that. And so that is most likely why um, we know it wasn't symbolic. Normally, and if you will remember, normally they would have cut their heads off, but they didn't. They didn't. They just, they, they took off the hands and the feet and then they were hung. So that's kind of a new one for us. If you just want to know the truth is in the execution style, but I hope that answers your question. Um, again, we're not, we're not given clarity, but you can just, just kind of think through the process as to what that would mean in a symbolic kind of way. So I do hope that helps. Uh, guys, any other thoughts, any other questions? I mean, David, David wanted a clear conscience here. Okay. David wanted his conscience clear that he didn't order it and he didn't approve it. And he wanted his people in the, the, the South to totally understand that. Look, I am not the guy that made this happen. He wanted the people of Israel to know as well, because if you remember, David was about to become king anyway, because Abner was bringing all the people from the North, uh, under David's reign. So, so this was all about to happen. Word was already out in the north that David was about to be their king one way or the other. So David just wanted to clear the air. Like I did not take this in a, in a coup attempt. I did not come in and kill your king. This is not me. He protected all of that family. And, and, and then he, 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 he served justice on those who harmed that family. But let's remember, before we kind of get out of this thing today, let's remember that there is one remaining person in Saul's family. Remember? There's one. Jonathan's son. The crippled boy. He's 12 now. Mephibosheth is still here. And we're going to see him again in the future. So we don't want to forget about Saul's grandson, Jonathan's son, the son of David's best friend, Mephibosheth, is still alive. It's going to be a good story. You don't want to miss it. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this beautiful Wednesday here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. I hope that God has blessed you. I hope that God has spoke to you. Thank you for all the comments, questions, and uh, input as we move on forward today. If you watch this thing later on, please, I want to encourage you to leave us a comment and just put replay so I'll know that you were here. I know that you were hanging out with us. Uh, guys, what a powerful story, right? I mean, it is just... Uh, it is incredible stuff. And so uh, what I want us to understand here is that this is all laying groundwork to the history that's taking place. It's setting the groundwork for everything we know in the New Testament. Guys, come see me tonight on campus. It starts at 6.30. Bring somebody with you. Join me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. It's going to be a great day as we kick off chapter 5 here in the book of 2 Samuel. And if you get out today, if you see anybody, tell them about Jesus. I'm out of here, guys. See you later.